It's true, the earth is flat. <laughs> I love my commenters. They come up with interesting facts and speculations that just wouldn't have occurred to me. One recent commenter watched one of my videos, disagreed with my points and accused me of believing that the earth is flat. Non sequitur much? <laughs> Anyway, I thought I would use ChatGPT to help me prove that the Earth actually is flat. I'm going to warn you at this point that there isn't going to be anything about audio in this video, and there is going to be maths. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Fun. There are, don't you know, more ways of achieving fun than audio. Don't tell Phil. <laughs> a bit of a caveat here, I'm relying on ChatGPT here, so my result may be wrong. But come on, you'll spot that and point out any errors in the comments. Are we having fun yet? So my premise is that flatness is something that can be measured. Obviously a mathematical plane is flat, but I'm thinking about real physical stuff. Flatness, as far as my tiny brain can understand it, comes in two forms. Flatness due to irregularities and flatness due to curvature, or should I say lack of flatness. And of course I'm simplifying and we won't get anywhere unless I do. I'm going to consider flatness due to curvature. So, whether the Earth is flat or not in the real physical world will depend on whether it's flatter or not than something that we would normally consider to be flat. And what's flatter than an optical filter? The kind that you'd put in front of a camera lens. Obviously, this has to be flat, otherwise the image will be distorted. I'm going to consider Hoyer brand filters, having used them in the past in my pre-digital days. Hoyer handily publishes their specifications for all kinds of parameters, but of course I'm interested in flatness here. The flatness of a standard Hoyer filter is specified as 3 fifths brackets 1 semicolon lambda equals 632.8 nanometers. OK, starting with the 1. Well, I don't know what that means, so I'm going to ignore it. Then we have the wavelength of light used to make the measurement. Then we have 3 fifths of that. So between the highest and lowest points of deviation across the surface of the filter, the difference must be less than this to achieve the specification. This includes both irregularity and curvature, but let's presume just curvature. And let's presume the filter is 50 millimetres in diameter, which is the reference size used in Hoyer's specs. I'll work this out for you. No, I'll let ChatGPT work this out. And the answer is just under 380 nanometres. That's not a lot of nanometers. As a perspective, light travels around 30 centimetres or one great British foot in a nanosecond. OK, that's not relevant. Let's move on. The filter is flat within 380 nanometers. Let's turn to the Earth. We have a problem. The Earth is an oblate spheroid, not a perfect spear. Spear. Sphere. <laughs> and it's irregular. Mountains and valleys and stuff. So let's simplify this to a perfectly smooth sphere of circumference 40,000 kilometres. Oh, we're all underwater, but let's not worry about that. To compare this with the filter, we need a spherical cap. Oh, a what? A circle of 50 millimetres diameter drawn on our perfectly smooth and spherical version of the Earth. The cap is the bit above the circle, like a cap. What we need to work out is the difference in height between the centre of the cap and the edge. I'm going to let ChatGPT do that, obviously. So let me pick out some key points. Here is the radius of the Earth. I could have started with that, but hey, I started with the circumference. Here's some geometry to calculate the difference in height between the centre of the cap and the edge. And so we work this through and get a difference in height between the centre and the edge of our 50 millimetre cap of 0.6 kilometres. 600 metres. Paying attention? <laughs> when I stood in maths and physics at school, one of the things that my teachers stressed was important was to consider whether my answers were reasonable. That's like a sniff test. Might be right, might be wrong. But if something smells funny, then it probably is funny. 600 metres! <laughs> Come on, this is clearly wrong. To be fair, ChatGPT will be the first to admit that it can be wrong. And we common people, peasants, have only had access to this kind of artificial intelligence for a bit more than a year, so we can allow it some leeway. I could suggest that you examine the calculation closely to see if you can find the error. But I'll tell you, if you look under the square root sign, the first value is in kilometres, the second is in millimetres. Anyone could make that mistake. So, 
I told ChatGPT very politely, I am always polite to our future AI overlords. And it did the calculation again. Much better, and I'm going to accept this answer. Come on, no one's going to die if it's wrong, and we're just having fun. Mathematicians, number files watching this will have fun spotting errors that I haven't spotted, and will undoubtedly comment and enlighten us all. So, converting the answer to more reasonable units, we have 0 0.814 nanometers. What do we have here? The filter was flat to within 380 nanometers. The Earth is flat to less than 1 nanometer. The Earth is flat, quad erat demonstrandum. Oh, you want to check chat GPT's calculation? Well, you won't do it with your four-function calculator. Not even with Google's online calculator. Look at all those decimal places. You'll need plenty of precision. Off you go. See you in the comments.